am so sorry to have to be here today. You know, when I saw the headline on my computer yesterday, it said, abortion doctor killed in Kansas, I knew immediately, and my heart sank. You shouldn't have to be a hero. You shouldn't have to be a saint or possessed of superhuman courage to be a doctor. But he was. And for that, we honor Dr. Tiller today. Dr. Tiller gave his life to save lives. And he didn't just save the lives of women in other states. You know, we like to think that here in New York, we're a safe haven where women who need abortions can get them, but that's not true. Because in some cases, there have been women in New York, like the 11-year-old child who couldn't get a physician in any hospital in New York to give her an abortion because it was too late in pregnancy after she had been raped. And she had to go to Dr. Tiller in Kansas. Dr. Tiller was the safety net for New York as well. And this isn't a political rally, but I think we have to commit ourselves to make sure that in Dr. Tiller's memory, we change our laws so that every woman in New York can get an abortion here in New York whenever she needs it. And as we think about Dr. Tiller and this horrible, horrible act that killed him, let's also celebrate his life and let's think of some of the other doctors who have, who have sacrificed so much and risked so much to provide women the care that we need. Let's think about Bill Rashbaum, who died a few years ago, whose family would call me regularly every time Bill felt a desperate need to speak out and defend his right to provide medical care for women and he went public his family would call me and ask me do you think that he's going to get killed for being public about this and let's think of Dr. Barnett Slepian who was murdered in his home outside of Buffalo just a little over a decade ago and let's think about the doctors, the nurses, the clinic staff who, who risk their lives every day to provide the services that women need in order to control their reproductive life and health. Yes. And let's think about the medical students and the nursing students and the PA students and the nurse practitioners who are now preparing for careers to protect the health and lives of women, whatever the risks. Yes. At the New York Civil Liberties Union, we were honored to know one of those providers because her daughter, Jessica Fireman, worked with us for a number of years. And of course, I immediately wrote to Jess when I heard about Dr. Tiller. She wrote back to me with an email from her brother about their mom, Liz Carlin. Liz Carlin was one of those docs who was told to wear a bulletproof vest because she was on the dirty dozen list, the list of doctors, the hit list for those so-called pro-life people who like the unborn but not the living. She was on the list and she was told to go around with a bulletproof vest, which she used to schlep with her in a suitcase. This is from Liz's son. My mom, Dr. Liz Carlin, was a self-proclaimed abortion doctor. Like Dr. Tiller, she was much more than that, and perhaps would have preferred to have been called just a doctor. My mom knew Dr. Tiller and worked to support him after he was shot in 1993. 
Mom volunteered to perform late-term abortions in Dr. Tiller's practice while he recovered, although I don't think Dr. Tiller's practice needed her services. My heart goes out to Dr. Tiller's family, who lived with fear year after year and eventually saw him murdered in front of them. Anyway, my mom died in 1998 of non-terrorism-related causes. But Dr. Tiller's death made me think about the weirdness of life in the abortion wars and the immense courage that Dr. Tiller showed year after year. Mom declined to wear the bulletproof vest because she figured they would just go for her head. She did learn evasive driving techniques, however, and thought that an assassination attempt could provide her with an opportunity to take someone out with her Jeep. She was forced to endure protesters with bloody fetuses at her house regularly until she held a huge counter protest with all her neighbors and cake and ice cream. The funny part was, when my mom adopted a black German shepherd dog, the protesters complained that she was intimidating them. There were a number of times when women who had protested outside her house or clinic came into the clinic as patients. She would listen to their stories and counsel them. Many of them would try to tell my mom that they weren't like the other bad women who came to get abortions. Sometimes she would agree to perform abortions on these women, and sometimes she would refuse, depending on the case. I've missed my mom a lot over the past 11 years. It was odd to see her vilified by some and lionized by, uh, by others, but she loved the fight. She worked long hours, and the pressure of her job exhausted her. My mom's courage was nothing compared to that of Dr. Tiller, who was known nationwide, who at the time of his murder had already been shot in both arms by terrorists and bombed, who lived in a far more conservative part of the country, who was prosecuted simply for practicing medicine. So let's applaud Dr. Tiller for his courage, year after year. When he could have been forgiven for packing it in and saying that he paid his dues. But instead, he performed the most controversial procedure in medicine, year after year, year after year, until they finally killed him for it. George Tiller.